the Yamaha Tenere 700. The thought of riding one has been teasing me since the release of the concept version in 2016. It seemed to be the ultimate cross between a street-worthy, long-distance cruiser and a capable off-road machine. Here we are over five years later and I finally got to see what the bike is all about. The question I had begged to be answered, is the Tenere 700 just a big dirt bike? I have very little time off-road on anything but purpose-built dirt bikes up to 450cc. I'm no expert dirt bike rider, but I've devoted the last four years or so to improving my abilities. That being said, I had no idea what to expect hopping on this big beast of a bike. Would I struggle to turn? Would the power be too hard to control? This was all a bit intimidating as I was gearing up to go for my first ride on it. Well, I turned on the ignition, shifted into gear, and I'll just let you watch this. As soon as I got on the bike and began slipping the clutch to get moving, I felt very at home. The seating position with the more flat aftermarket rally seat and lower than stock Phoenix handlebars had me thinking I was on a slightly swelled up version of my YZ with a nice cozy butt pad. The steering is smooth and playful, the power is linear yet feisty. Oh yeah, and obviously it wheelies pretty well too. The only problem being, you can't see f all around that massive gas tank. We wanted to observe the motorbike in various environments. It turns out that this species of motorbike was rather uncomfortable here. Surely this was not the habitat fit for the Yamaha. However, the baristas surely wasted no time getting flirty with the rider. We were unable to replicate these results with other species of motorbike. With these newly acquired data points, we had hoped that the Tenere was indeed closely related to the YZ family. So we headed back out to do more field testing. good so far though I'm gonna cut that turn because it's already blown out anyway honestly wow man if it's if it had suspension sorted out you could legitimately rip this thing oh yeah the ass end just bucks up and the front end dives right down <laughs> horrible suspension gotta take it real easy on those whoops <laughs> this section of trail right here was actually my very first ride on the bike sandy flowy but very whooped out aside from the obvious weight difference the feel of balance came very naturally leaning into turns and weaving between trees was no issue using the throttle to slide the rear end was actually more confidence inspiring given the engine's phenomenally responsive and linear nature it feels a lot like a normal sized dirt bike in that regard. Handling the whoops, however, were the first sign of meh. The suspension and stock form is definitely lacking when it comes to blasting whoops and other bumps. The front blew through the stroke and dove while the rear end bounced all over and bucked up. This caused a pretty violent upset in keeping the bike going straight. After playing with some of the suspension settings, I was able to stabilize this a little bit, but it still wasn't very confidence inspiring. If you want to see all these clips just hearing the bike noise, stick around to the end. I'm going to play everything there. Very obviously, this bike does not have the same ground clearance as a normal dirt bike, and it's a lot harder to wrestle over obstacles you get stuck on. So be careful about that. 
Get rid of the whoops and the fun really begins. I took the bike out on my home trails. Sharp corners, ruts, logs, tight tree gaps, it pretty much has everything. I was shocked at how easily I managed to pilot it through some of these sections. I have next to no experience on a bike of this size in an off-road setting, and within minutes, I was feeling confident enough to take some risks, brake late, and get both wheels sliding a bit. Maybe I even got a little too comfortable at times. Thankfully, the exhaust didn't explode on me, but I may owe Tyler, my friend and the owner of the bike, some cash down the road. Big oof. In conclusion, I was very happy with the bike. We've all seen the Pultaris videos by now, so we know that the bike is capable of way more than us mortals would ever attempt. Ignoring that, I would say that any competent dirt bike rider can absolutely get on the Tenere and do some pretty technical riding without feeling out of place. There are obvious limits when it comes to things like high speed whoops or massive jumps. You can't exactly ride it like a dirt bike in these cases, it just won't be as forgiving. But when it comes to turning, the feel of power, the balance, the clutch, it really does feel like you're on a big dirt bike. If you don't have much off-road experience on a motorcycle, whether it be big or small, you likely won't be able to just hop on the Tenere and ride it in this manner. Your form and riding technique will play a huge role in operating it safely off-road. Balance is key. This isn't a bike you can manhandle to prevent falls and tip overs. The bike opened up a whole new riding experience for me and the possibilities of what terrain you can ride it on don't seem to have many boundaries. It's not quite just a big dirt bike, but it sure as hell comes close enough for me and I think Yamaha did a great job with this bike. All right, I'm gonna stop talking and let you listen to that absolutely incredible exhaust note ripping through the woods. But first, I've gotta give a big thank you to my buddy Tyler, who helped film most of this and also loaned me his Tenere to make the video. Also, my friend Devin helped some filming as well. Thanks to both of you guys. Would have been impossible to do this otherwise. So, I don't, I'm just riding off-road, but we're, it's like a joke in the motorcycle community that BMW owners don't just start us all the time, so that's the ride. So, here's a Yamaha, but... If you like this video and you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. Also, share this video. It would be greatly appreciated. Also, go check out my website, brad-products.com, where you can find various aftermarket performance motorcycle parts for mainly dirt bikes, but I'm hoping to breach into the ADV market soon as well. Every product listed on the site is personally tested by me to ensure the quality meets a high standard. Testing typically takes place over the course of a minimum 100 hours of ride time before I feel comfortable selling the product. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. The website is how I make a living and also helps support this channel, so any purchase goes a long way.